we have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to celebrate the great festival of Christmas. In this service we hear and receive the good news of the birth of Christ and we offer to God our thanksgiving in the joyful singing of carols. As we gather together in the name of Christ, we pray for the world he came to save, for the Church, that it may be enabled in our generation to surrender anew to God's holy wisdom and bear the good news of God's love to a needy world, for the world which is already Christ's, that all its peoples may recognise their responsibility for its future and may be inspired by the message of Christmas to work together for the establishment of justice, freedom and peace everywhere. For all in special need, the sick, the anxious, the lonely, the fearful and the bereaved, that the peace and light of the Christ child may bring hope and healing to all who sit in darkness. We commend all whom we love, all who have asked for our prayers, to the unfailing mercy of our Heavenly Father, and say together, as Christ himself taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Do be seated. reading comes from Isaiah 11. Christ's birth and kingdom are foretold. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, 
the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God.
The second re reading is taken from Luke 1. The angel Gabriel appears to Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee, Gal Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is a sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed her. Thanks be to God.
chapter 2, verses 1 to 20, the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Thanks be to God.
The Visit of the Wise Men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to be my shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and inquired of them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thanks be to God. We 
think of him as safe beneath the steeple, or cosy in a crib beside the font. But he is with a million displaced people on the long road of weariness and want. For even as we sing our final carol, his family is up and on that road, fleeing the wrath of someone else's quarrel, glancing behind and shouldering their load. Whilst Herod rages, still from his dark tower, Christ clings to Mary, fingers tightly curled. The lambs are slaughtered by men of power, and death squads spread their curse across the world. But every Herod dies and comes alone to stand before the Lamb upon the throne.
If you're able to, please stand for the final reading. St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do be seated for a moment. Do you know what? When I wrote my little homily for last year's Christmas carol service here in Wilton, I remember thinking, well, if the rector does invite me back to do this next year, at least it will have been a better year with a bit less gloom to have to deal with in the sermon. Oh dear. We gather for Christmas this year, I think, in a better place nationally, praise God, as regards COVID. I finally got it last month, having escaped it for two and a half years. But we gather in a world where we are even more aware, probably, than we were last year, that there are people living in our communities, and indeed it may be true for some of you here, uh, where people are having to make daily real-life decisions about whether to put the heating on or to eat. And where more and more refugees and asylum seekers arrive on our shores, people compelled to climb into flimsy boats and in the depth of winter navigate the darkness and the cold of the channel. And where since the beginning of this month, I think there have been three days on which there has not been one or other essential sector of our society on strike. And that's before we begin to cast our gaze towards Ukraine or the Holy Land or the many other places that you know about and that I could list. Now you've come here for a carol service, not for a political speech, and you're not going to get a political speech. And indeed I was very tempted to just preach on the John Lewis Christmas advert again this year. But I think we do arrive at this Christmas um, even more acutely aware of the brittleness um, and the fragility and the exhaustion and the cruelty of our world. And I think it does seem that we need to try to do something about that. And then the king chose Malcolm Geith's sonnet, Refugee, to be read at the royal carol service this year. You just heard it read. Um, one of the, I don't think the king is going to make a lot of changes to things very quickly, but he made this change straight away. And he put in, I, I, I encourage you to Google it, or, or other search engines are available, um, probably, um, when you get home, and have a look at it again. Um, it is an extraordinary sonnet, um, and the king particularly chose for it to be read this year at his own carol service. We substituted it right at the last minute for this one. It is quite extraordinary. Geit is um, an Anglican priest and a poet, and he reminds us at Christmas that Jesus doesn't stay here in the crib. Just shortly after his own birth, he, of course, becomes a refugee, fleeing in the arms of his parents because of persecution. Uh, as we heard lines from that sonnet, for even as we sing our final carol, his family is up and on the road, fleeing the wrath of someone else's quarrel, glancing behind and shouldering their load. It is an extraordinarily moving poem. It also says something quite encouraging, I think, about our new king and his priorities. But at the risk of treason, I actually don't think the king has come up with an original thought. Malcolm Geith's sonnet is not saying anything particularly new. Um, and we know that because we just heard the choir sing Richard Shepherd's Song of Mary a few minutes ago. Those words are 2,000 years old, lifted from the pages of St. Luke. And if you glance your eye down that page of your order of service, they are all about God's love for and concern for and attention to the poor, the hungry, the meek. And here is the good news of Christmas. God is where we are. God is where you are, where all of us are. And that means God doesn't have to be persuaded to come and help the poor or the hungry or the refugee or the cold or the isolated or the hopeless or the lonely. Whatever else we're doing here tonight, we are not trying to persuade God to notice. God already noticed. God is already here. 
born into the squalor of a borrowed stable, his formative memories, those of displacement and persecution, while Herod rages still from his dark tower, Christ clings to Mary, fingers tightly curled. So we too carry Christ, and in our darkness, or in the darkness of those around us, his fingers are gripping ours. You often see in Eastern Orthodox imagery, um, um, pictures of the nativity, and Christ is holding on to Mary's finger. Um, it's not delicate, he's grabbing hold of it. That is what God does to us. What we are doing here tonight is remembering that God is already here. The promise and the glory of Christmas is that we are never alone. The work of Christmas for us is to decide whether or not we want to join in, whether or not we want to be part of what God is doing. Joining in, resisting the darkness to bring a little bit more light a little bit closer. So actually, it turns out I am preaching on the John Lewis Christmas advert because it is about noticing, it is about kindness, it's about joining in, it's about learning to skate. Amen.
the rector and the church wardens, um, I thank all those who have been involved in the preparation for this wonderful service, musicians, uh, choir, um, those who've provided refreshments, decorated the church, provided readings and everything else. Um, bless you and Merry Christmas. Do bow your heads and prepare for the blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.